So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand and I welcome you to the series called RBI 24/7. So guys, as you must be knowing that in this series we discuss some questions which can be of use to you if you are preparing for competitive exams, right? So let's not waste any time and get straight away to the questions. But before doing that, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel. So if this is the first video of our channel that you are watching then do not forget to hit the subscribe button it can help you to stay in touch with us and do not forget to press this bell icon which is flashing on the screen it can help you to get notified whenever a new video comes up right you can join our telegram group also here you can ask all your doubts and queries and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible so i hope you are ready for question number 1 so here is question number one for today, which says, "What does it refer to?" Right. So two statements are given to you that describe a certain a certain event, right? And you have to uh, identify that which one is that. Moving ahead to the solution, and the correct option for this question is option E. Option E means that the correct answer is bubble, right? So. See, bubble is a very common term and if we talk about the current scenario of our financial world that I think this is a very relevant term and I think we have discussed many questions that surround uh, this topic, right? So, see, first of all, let us try to understand the meaning of bubble. Bubble is something that you just put air into and expand its size, whether or not it is able to handle it. Right. So, 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 so similar logic can be applied to the financial sector that if you are trying to inflate or if you are trying to put value into something which is not even worth that much, then that is called a bubble. Right. And what happens? So, uh, remember whenever you are trying to uh, in, uh, put air into a balloon and what happens when you put too much air into it? It bursts. Right. So similar thing happens with this bubble when it expands too much or more than its ability to hold. The bubble bursts, right? So here I'm talking about the value that you can put into financial assets and that asset can be anything. It Basically anything that can be traded has some value, right? So it can be any asset, it can be any commodity and it can be any financial asset, financial security, shares, stocks, bonds, anything, right? Basically, anything that you can put value into. So, it is created by a surge in asset prices. So, basically, there is an asset and prices are rising of this particular asset. But see, the point is that price is not rising because of any fundamental change in that asset. Let's say if there is any change in asset or it has become... Uh, it, it has become more useful to humankind, then it deserves some kind of price rise. But if this price rise, the, the cause behind this is not uh, some fundamental change into the asset or not some actual change into the value of asset, but just because speculation, just because too many people are demanding it, that is why prices are rising. In that case, the price becomes much more than the actual worth of the asset. And that results into creation of a bubble. So it is driven by exuberant market behavior. So not driven by the fundamentals but uh, driven by market behavior or the activities of investors. And it is also followed by a quick decrease in value or contraction. Because see market is, markets are self-correcting. Whenever investors realize that okay this is too much and we cannot inflate the prices or this asset do not have much uh, much value to it uh, as according to its price then it is bound to burst and the prices come down rapidly so that the with the same uh, usually uh, the speed with which the bubble gets created uh, it, it bursts faster than that or the prices they come down rapidly right moving ahead so here you can see bubble economic cycle so basically it is part of an economic cycle that bubble is created and then it bursts. Characterized by rapid escalation of market value, particularly in the prices of assets. 
typically trade at a price or within a price range that greatly exceeds assets intrinsic value intrinsic value means the actual fundamental value of the asset या फिर सिंपल भाषा में कहें तो उस एसेट की एक्चुअल वैल्यू कितनी है हम उसकी बात यहाँ पे कर रहे हैं कि अगर जो मार्केट का प्राइस है वो सिर्फ डिमांड की वजह से बहुत ज्यादा हो जाता है इट इट राइजेस टू अ लेवल विच इज हायर देन इट्स इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू फंडामेंटल वैल्यू देन इट रिजल्ट इन क्रिएशन ऑफ अ बबल राइट सो आई थिंक देर आर मेनी पॉपुलर केसेस ऑफ बबल क्रिएशन आई थिंक जापान इज अ वेरी गुड एग्जाम्पल एंड वी हैव डिस्कस इट मेनी टाइम्स एट जापान इट वेस्ट About it faced creation of an asset bubble where between some eighty five to nineties, and after that time, what uh, what uh, what followed was so that time it used to uh, it used to be called as the lost decade for Japan, ninety to two thousands. But this lost decade has expanded more than a decade, and it is currently it is continuing today. Also, because Japan has not been able to achieve that growth rate. See, asset rise in asset prices, creation of bubble in nineties, followed by a uh, followed by a fall in prices or some recession recessionary tendencies. Right. So this is one a uh, very famous example. Apart from this, apart from this, we all know U.S. housing bubble. I think we have detailed. Uh, we have discussed this crisis us financial crisis housing bubble creation in detail right and apart from that a recent example was uh, cryptocurrency when bitcoin's price it, it increased more than even 20000 dollar and after that after then came crashing down right so many people lost their money here also because uh, they were thinking that yes bitcoin is going to be the next uh, new big thing but Uh, currently, we do not know what is going to happen to Bitcoin, but yes, the prices were definitely driven by market behavior rather than the fundamentals of cryptocurrency, right? Okay, so guys, here I would like to give you some food for your thought. There is something called tulip mania. I don't know if you are aware of it or not, but if you are not, try to. Give it some research. I think you are going to find it very interesting to read. So give it some thought, and you will realize that any asset can, uh, the prices of any asset can rise and can lead to creation of an of an asset bubble, right? So, and guys, do not forget to mention it on the comments that uh, did you like to read about this topic or not, right? Okay, here you can see stages of creation of bubble. First of all, displacement. when the interest of the investor is shifting to a particular new regime or a new area some of the investors they are realizing that okay this is some new area which has some value can create some big thing for future right so notice a shift in paradigm after that boom then herd behavior follows and prices start to boom and after that comes the stage of euphoria when mc in euphoria stage everyone is suffering from fomo i hope we know what is the full form of fomo fear of missing out so everyone thinks that okay my friend is going to invest in such asset and is going to make money and i will be left out so um, uh, everyone is scared of this left out feeling that is why they try to put their money into this particular booming asset and the price prices skyrocket see creation of bubble does not necessarily means that the asset is bad or there is some fundamental problem with asset but uh, it simply means that the prices are rising way ahead then what is it worth right so the asset the product might be really good but but, but just because of too much demand but just because of this herd behavior the fear of missing out everyone is trying to put their money in that particular asset Right, where correction is needed, and then profit making. Now, when now the bubble is created, and many investors who notice some sign that okay, there is a bubble and it is going to burst, they make money. Not all, in fact, most of the investors in the market they are going to lose their money because they cannot identify the signs that the bubble is going to burst. But those of them who do, they are going to make money. Right. So uh, I I don't know if you have watched the movie. I have. Told you this, I think, uh, before also. The movie called Big Shot, Christian Bale's movie. It very nicely depicts, beautifully depicts that how a bubble is created, and 
uh, when everyone in the market is losing money, some people are there who knew beforehand that what was going to happen, who identified the signals of creation of bubble and its bursting, they make money, right? So I think this movie is going to help you understand this point. After that, panic. Now the bubble has burst and many uh, big investors who knew, uh, who have made profit, they have exited the market after taking everyone's money and what is left in the market is panic. That the course of prices, it changes and the prices drop, right? So this is asset bubble. Moving ahead to the next question for today. There is the second question which says this is, there is a country whose banking system has been burdened with non-performing assets. Right? Okay. The central bank of this country looks to take some actions regarding this. Which of the following can be exercised by the central bank to handle the situation? Let's see what the correct option is. So guys, if you want, you can pause the video and have a deep look at the options and then decide your answer. Moving ahead to the solution and the option is, correct option is option B. Okay. See, I hope you understand the situation. Very simple. Country banking banking sec banking sector has been riddled with the problem of NPAs. Now central bank needs to do something. Let us discuss all the options one by one and let us understand why these are incorrect and option B is correct. Right? So okay. Option A says that the bank can bring down the provisioning provisioning coverage ratio. So guys, if you remember, we have discussed this ratio called PCR in one of our previous session. So uh, in simple terms, it means that how much provision is being created by bank in relation to the bad assets it is having, right? So if it is going to make a loss of 100 crores, what is the saving that it has in its name, in, in that particular losses name? That is through PCR, right? So see, when the banking sector ha is having the problem of NPAs, bringing down PCR might not help because this is going to reduce bank saving, which can help by freeing capital, which can be used to extend loan. See, creation of NPAs in itself means that the borrowers or the loans which have been made earlier, they are not able to repay the money. That is why we, we do not need reckless end lending here. We need careful lending and we need to create provisions against the assets which are going to go bad. That is why cutting down PCR might not help. Option C. Central bank can bring down interest rate which will lead re to reduce cost of borrowing and help banks go with cheaper funds. So this also might not help because see this is a step when uh, uh, this is a step taken by central banks when central bank wants to boost lending in the market. It wants banks to lend out money with an open heart. But here reckless lending might not help as I just told you in the first point. Right? So uh, bringing down interest rate might not be of help. After that, it can be beneficial for banks to invest in different types of businesses like insurance which will help them to avail the benefit of economies of scale, reducing their costs. See, here a bank which is already looking forward to some losses is going to invest in something really different from its core business. So, it is going to, uh, it, it is going to make things more complex, right? And it is going to involve risk also because a bank is going to enter some new industry, let's say insurance, let's say investment banking or uh, some different type of banking services which it does not have experience to, right? So uh, increasing risk is not a very good option here. And the last option E says central bank should try to locate factors behind low transmission of policy rate changes and ensure its correction. So. Uh, transmission is low in the economy, whatever changes are being made by the central bank are not being passed on to the borrowers, right? So usually this is one, this is one major problem for central bank. But see here we are talking about what is going to be helpful in, create, in uh, fighting with the problem of NPS or in controlling the, uh, the, the problem of NPS, right? So low transmission here usually low transmission is looked forward or central banks look to control this problem when they want uh, their rate cuts to, to, to get transferred in the economy or they want to boost the economy, right? But here central banks want to control NPS. That is why the best option is going to be advising banks against investing capital 
for any business other than its core banking business because uh, the central bank does not want commercial banks to take any sort of risk because if they take risk or if they invest somewhere where they are going to make more losses then uh, then this burden of NPAs is going to be amplified. That is why it is best in this situation to not to take risk and stick to something that these banks know best. That is its core banking business, right? So, moving ahead. Okay. So this is in relation to a case uh, which has been in news recently, where Axis Bank, Axis Bank combined with two other entities, is going to take over Max Life Insurance Company. Right, so see a bank is going to combine with an insurance company. Right, so Access is not doing it alone. And Access earlier asked RBI if it could, if it could, uh, if it could buy some stake in Max Life Insurance, but RBI declined. That is why Access is now getting a lesser stake and is getting the help of two other entities. Because RBI from uh, from some time it has been cautious. And it does not want banks to get into some other businesses like insurance and investment banking. Right? So RBI is typically not in favor of bank parting with its capital for any business other than its core banking business. They want banks to focus on their own business, mind their own business without looking here or there uh, or without looking, uh, without looking for any risky opportunities. They don't want that right now. Right. The reason is to avoid the spillover risk in the wake of rising bad loans and need for greater provisioning. Because if these banks they they face uh, they they are going to face some losses, they are going to face NPs. It might also affect their uh, it might also affect the value of companies where they have already invested. That is why to prevent this interlinking. So it is not a good time to uh, to encourage interlinking or interconnectedness of different industries. Right. That is why RBI is saying, let us try to separate different functions and regulate them. Right. Okay. I hope we all are clear with the term spillover. Spillover means that effect of one industry gets transferred to other industry or effect of one, any event happening in one country gets transferred to another country. Uh, for example, US-China trade war, two countries were fight, uh, two countries were in the war here US and China but it affected the trade for the entire world because they are such huge economies any any problem that goes on with them affects the entire world right so it affected the trade on a global level so that is the meaning of spillover okay there was a um, there was a question about the difference between spillover and contagion so it's an old doubt uh, they both the terms are quite similar to each other but one difference or one small difference that we can make out is spillover and contagion. See, let's say there, there is one industry A which is facing problem and its effect gets transferred to B. In spillover, the effect that is getting transferred to B is not very high as compared to what is being faced by A. Whereas in contagion, the effect that is going on the other industry, the, the effect that is going on from A to B can be even higher than A or at least of the same magnitude. So, so the difference is of magnitude. Spillover is used for some, for less magnitude after effect, whereas contagion can be used for a, uh, for, for a, a greater term, right? Okay, so spillover effects, type of network effect that increased since globalization in trade and stock market deepened. So spillover effect, uh, this, this effect increases when countries are too linked to each other or different industries are linked to each other. So RBI wants to prevent this spillover effect by keeping banks in their, in their own core industry and uh, preventing them from diverting into other industries. Right? So, okay, one more thing. Spillover uh, necessary, does not necessarily refer to bad impact. It can be possible that some good thing has happened into industry B and it has benefited industry, sorry, industry A. It has benefited in industry B as well. Although usually it is used in a negative context, but it can refer to positive spillover effect also, right? Where one industry's benefit benefits some other also, some other industry, right? 
Moving ahead to third question for today. Here is the third question. I hope the screen is perfectly visible. And this question says, which of the following are true in context of venture capitalists? So three statements given to you. You have to select that which out of these they are true in context of VC, venture capitalists, right? Uh, you can pause the video. Uh, Read these statements carefully, then decide with your answer. Moving ahead to the solution, and the solution here is option A. Option A means only one is correct, rest two are not correct. C. Venture capitalist, let us first understand what is the meaning of it, right? Venture capitalist, it means they are basically firms, they are uh, private firms which put some money into other smaller level firms and help them to rise help them to help them financially so that they can also carry on their operations and expand their operations basically venture capitalists they look for potential in smaller firms and try to develop uh, provide them with financial support and try to develop those firms right so this is the meaning of venture capitalists as you can see here so the first statement which is correct, private equity investor, so it's, an, it's a private investor that provides capital to companies exhibiting high growth potential in exchange for an equity stake. And in return, these venture capitalists, they usually take some equity stake into the smaller firm to which they are providing funding, right? Now coming to question two, sorry, statement two, which says rate of failure is very low. So this is the statement is not correct because in case of VCs, the rate of failure is very high because they are putting their money into smaller firms and they, it involves a lot of risk. So let's say there is a venture capitalist firm and it has funded 10 smaller firms, right? Now there are chances that out of these 10 firms, only one is going to be successful rest 9 are going to fail but the point is that how is this venture capitalist model working that this we see it it, um, it believes that it is going to make so much money into this one success that it is going to compensate for all other losses so although the rate of failure is very high but whenever there is success the success is also huge it is massive and it can compensate for the other losses so this is the model that is why rate of failure is high it is not it is not low right and after that VCs invest in a company from the very beginning so this is uh, usually not true because VCs they put their money um, in a company when they are when they usually start to commercialize their operations or they are making some money but they are on smaller level so they do not act as seed investors providing money from the very beginning right So, here you can have some more details about VCs, right? I think we have discussed most of the things here. Experiences high rate of failure because of the risk involved an unproven company. They do not know that which company is going to, uh, going to be successful in future, right? Willing to risk because they can earn massive return on the investment if these companies are success. So, Talking about the current situation, they have stepped up funding in early stage startups on the back of faster digitization. So, guys, as you all know that we are going through a pandemic and most of the operations have converted into digital operations. So, that is why many firms such as e -farm, many uh, many sectors such as EdTech or IT security or cloud services or e-pharmacy, basically anything. Uh, if you can provide any any type of service online, then your work can keep going uh, amidst of this pandemic, right? So, uh, taking advantage of this, this huge digitization boom, these VCs, they are putting their money into, of, uh, into businesses. So, on the back of faster digitization of existing offline businesses, so usually the the, uh, the industries which were traditionally offline like education and healthcare, they have also started to come up online. So businesses across fintech, edtech, consumer tech and others, right? So early stage investment, they saw 
sharp rise in August, uh, August and October period. See, because many com MNCs, their employees are working from homes, and for that they need better communication facilities. They need better uh, employee control softwares. They need better. Uh, they need. Uh, better security data security services so a huge boom to digitization which has been led by pandemic right moving ahead to the correct option sorry moving ahead to the next question okay question number fourth for today which is sebi has recently come up with some new rules by introducing a new category called flexi cap category for mutual funds which of the following describes the objective of this step very easy question. SEBI has come up with a new category of mutual funds called flexi cap categories. Moving ahead to the solution, and the solution is option C. Option C means to provide freedom to mutual funds in choice of investments. Right. So before understanding that uh, this, let us understand what happened in September. In September, SEBI came up with some new rules in which it said that. A multi cap mutual fund, basically, the rules were for multi cap fund, a multi cap fund which invests into in, uh, companies of different sizes. So, they can invest some money into small cap, some money cap here refers to capitalization, uh, some money into mid cap, and some money into large cap. So, multi cap funds, so this, this is this I'm talking about September that Sevi said in September that multi cap funds. They should invest minimum of 75% in equity and that to 25% in each large, mid and small. Basically, this is the minimum limit out of their total assets. They have to invest 75% in equity and a minimum of 25% into large, 25% into mid, 25% into small. And I think we, we covered this in our, one of our previous sessions also. So, if you want to know the reason behind this, why did Sebi uh, take this step, you can refer to that session. Now, it is saying that, okay, we are introducing a new category which is called flexi cap category, according to which mutual funds would have to invest 65% into equity, but there are going to be no restrictions on uh, on the company size that they are investing, such as they were, they were in they are in multi cap funds in flexi cap funds uh, mutual funds have a choice they have freedom they can invest as per their preference right so there is no uh, there are no restrictions on investment into uh, various cap sizes so move has cheered up investors who are cautious about their investments in multi cap funds due to the change in portfolio allocation rules see Many investors, they were cautious then because SEBI came up with such tight rules and many uh, investors who wanted most of their investments in large funds or most, <coughs> sorry, most of their investments in small cap, they, they, they were doubtful of their investments because things change. Now, in, under flexi cap funds, they do not need to change much. Um, they can simply invest into flexi cap funds. So this is a move to address those concerns of investors that uh, that uh, that took place when this earlier decision came out. So mutual funds they have the option to convert an existing scheme into flexi fund. Fund houses in such cases will have to give investors a thirty day window to exit without any exit flow. So mutual funds they have they can convert their schemes into flexi cap fund and will have to provide 30 days for the investors if they want to leave the scheme. Moving ahead to the last question for today. That is the last question which says according to a recent circular, SEBI has asked open-ended debt mutual funds except liquid and overnight funds to hold at least dash percent of their corpus in liquid assets. Moving ahead to the solution and the correct option is option D. Option D means 10%. See, this is also for mutual funds. Very simple. Uh, this rule has come out for open-ended debt mutual funds. Open-ended debt mutual funds means um, there is no limit. These mutual funds, open-ended means that there is no limit. Anyone can exit and enter anytime into these mutual funds. And open-ended debt mutual funds, mutual funds who invest into debt, they have to at least invest 10% of their total assets into liquid assets right 
very simple circular and why is it so because obviously uh, the regulators they want some of the assets of mutual funds to be available wherever whenever there is a redemption pressure right here you can see liquid assets simply those assets which can be converted into cash really quickly uh, like government securities and liquid fund and overnight funds are exempted from this rule because they already invest uh, a good amount into uh, uh, securities that can be converted into cash easily that is why there is no need to put a restriction as you can see here liquid funds they invest at least 20% of their corpus in liquid assets overnight funds the security is mature really quickly in one day that is why they are also investing into liquid assets and circular has also asked mutual funds to stress test their portfolios stress test means to check their resilience that whether they can handle any strong redemption pressure or not right so these are the deadlines for adopting this uh, this liquidity holding rule and the stress testing rule which is going to be effective from december 1 2020 and liquidity holding effective from 1 february 2021 So guys these these are the five questions for today i hope you learned something new from this video and before ending the session i would like to take some doubts okay uh, this doubt has been taken from the telegram group and it is by rahul bajat puriya rahul asks that what is the difference between fair value and market value see market value is uh, uh, market value is defined by the forces of demand and supply that what is the demand just as we were talking about the asset bubble what is the market value or what is the value defined by the demand and supply forces where is the fair value fair value is basically they can be different methods to calculate it fair value can be a uh, fair value is basically that what is the actual fundamental value of the asset or what is the uh, what is the correct value that should be given to it in many cases market value can be a representative of fair fair value right so uh, basically you were asking the difference between uh, fair value and amount uh, assets based on amortized value see amortized value means assets are being depreciated so amortization is nothing but depreciation which happens on intangible assets so uh, this amortized value this is being uh, calculated according to books whereas whereas the fair value it, it can have different measures it can be calculated by market value as well right okay so this was rahul there was a question by janki and janki was asking the difference between special purpose vehicle and special purpose acquisition company um spv special purpose vehicle and umbrella term broader term spac is special purpose acquisition company they are a type of special purpose vehicle right <coughs> so spv uh, can spvs can accommodate a, a, a number of other companies which are meant for some other purposes as well whereas spac is specially meant for acquisition so it is spac is a type of spv right okay uh, let me see if there are okay there was one doubt by farsu ram soni okay he is asking the problems with full capital account convertibility see the major problem is high volatility because if you are going to calculate the exchange rate on the basis of market forces then obviously there can be speculation and there is going to be volatility there is going to be no stability so high volatility other disadvantages are just uh, a, a cut out from this one major disadvantage that is high volatility okay this is it for guys this is it for today guys and i'll see you in the next session uh, till then you take care of yourself take care of your health keep your studies going on And thank you for being here.